Okay. Can you share my my slide? Can you see the? I can see your desktop now. I can see your slide. Uh -huh. Okay, dear all, we are start the meeting. Um, this is the agenda. You have the etherpad. Please put your name in the etherpad and contribute it with the menu. Okay, uh, today, please be aware that this meeting is based on not well, and we are going to discuss uh, about the capabilities features that we want for Ripple. Okay, the not well, we are not going to repeat it, but this meeting uh, is uh, aligned with that not well. Please be aware of that. So this is the, the discussion points proposed for Raul, and the configuration option structure, uh, what we do with the capabilities and awareness and error, and the capabilities option structure and semantics. So Raul, do you want to take a bit of yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but before I begin, uh, Pascal, can I can can I request you to mute uh, Michael? Uh, oh, oh, because I think his uh, his laptop is making the background sound. Okay. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. So I switched to my phone. <coughs> Yeah, this is much better. Uh, there, there, there's no sound, background sound now. Okay, so let's uh, let's begin. Uh, uh, just a quick just a quick recap of what uh, we discussed last time. Uh, the first was the problem of uh, eliding the options. Uh, we discussed uh, what the problem was, and we had a quick solution. Uh, we had this discussion back on mailing list. Having said that, uh, as of now, we haven't so. so, so so, so last time we discussed about using the lower four bits of uh, lower four bits in the reserved section in the base DIY message. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, the small pink color box on the right hand side of the message shows the number of bits that we are going to make use of. Uh, this was the first. Uh, this is the first point. Uh, so, so, so this four bits. One of the problems that uh, I thought about was uh, if we are going to just make use of four lower four bits. Is it going to be sufficient enough for uh, for uh, the lollipop sequence counter? Uh, I'm not sure about this, and I'm not sure if we ever had a lollipop counter which is which has such a low uh, entropy or the number of uh, bits. Uh, the second problem that I wanted. I'm not sure we needed it to be a lollipop. Did we? Uh, if we don't have it as a lollipop, then the problem is if the node restarts, then and if it reads, restarts with the same value, then we still have an issue that it may not, or uh, it, it may not be able to. I mean, there is a scenario where the stale information still the network. I don't see that scenario. No. Unless you say the root reboots. Uh, so. The root reboots, or for that matter, any other node uh, as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. In this case, the root has to reboot because root is the one who is controlling the uh, sequence counter. Uh, no other node is going to increment the sequence counter. So, so if the root reboots, and then after reboot, it comes up with an updated set of information, and if ends up using the same value as the previous uh, counter, previous value, then then the notes won't get updated. Is it? Is it? Is it true? Well, we can I, say I, that normally the roots should maintain things in stable storage, anyway, and that could be what the root says. Okay. So we, we can we make an assumption here that the root has to make, a, but but such kind of assumption is not there with any other sequence counter or any other no every other sequence counter lollipop sequence counter also needs some sort of persistent storage is that what you're saying mm. Oof, i have to think about that normally the lollipop is like you say because you can reboot
Yes, I think it's only the root, but as you say, we 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 allowed the root to to reboot for other things like the DTSN or things like that. Correct. So or the, the version number. So why not here? I mean, by default, all the all the report counters are already built. Exactly. Uh, but but all the other ripple counters are eight bits at least uh, in size, uh, except for this one, which is which might be four bits. Is it okay for a lollipop counter to be four bits in size? Yeah, assuming that we are going for a lollipop counter, but I'm not sure uh, as of now we have decided to do. I, I mean, you know, the way the ripple function the version works is you use really four bits for, for the window that you're mm. using. Um, because anything outside of the window is detected as an error. And so the window has to be small compared to the total number of the wrapping. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we have like 16 out of 56. <clears throat> so we have a large uh, place where we can detect that somebody is out of sync. Um, so, so we only, only have four bits usable in the current sequence counter, which has like, uh, which is one byte. So if we used only four bits, and we use a lollipop, and that's we used it to like two bits or something. It's so small. Uh, can can we say? Okay, I mean, uh, Pascal, you said that currently we have first four bits as the sequence window. Is uh, no, I'm saying that uh -huh. the, the sequence number is comparable today in in the version in the version number of things like that. Um, it's comparable with another mm. one if they are plus or minus a window of two of the power of n. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's like a window of 16. So if your sequence number and my sequence number are within a window of 16, which is four bits, then we can compare. I can say I'm bigger than you or you're bigger than me. Right. Um, anything else, like if, if your, uh, your value minus mine um, is more than 16, like we are more than 16 away. Um, then Ripple says the two numbers cannot be compared. The two devices are out of sync. Okay. Um, so the noise is gone. I was saying that 16 is the number of, of increments we can do before we lose contact, basically. Is that clear like that? Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and that's, that's 16 out of uh, a sequence counter of one byte. So if we had only four bits for the sequence counter, then how much would we reduce you know, the usable window? Two bits? And it's going to be very, very small. So, you see what so I mean? just to be clear, is don't we have other signals that the root has rebooted? No, we do have signals. No, no, no. Right, right now. Number starts from zero. Well, what about the DTSN? Yes. You, well, the, the version is is enough. We can use DTSN, but DTSN can also be done by the uh, The the uh, the version number. Is is the one which is subject to um, to lollipop. So we could say that the lollipop value are inherited from the version number. So if 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 you see the lollipop in the version stick part of it in the version number, then you know that that the number the configuration option number is fresh. You don't have to store that, is what I think. Yes, no, 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 but, but con no, the version number can increment because of, right? I mean, it, it might not necessarily be because of the reboot. It might be for a global refresh of the network. Yes, understood, it's understood. But it's subject if, to the mm -hmm. what, what matters is that the node can see that the, 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 the root has rebooted because the root is now in the lollipop part of the version. Is that not the case? No, uh, baby, there is no way for the for the child nodes to know that the root, root is rebooted right now. Even if yeah, uh, so 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 if, if the 
if a root has started and if it is still in the lollipop uh, i mean in the linear part of the lollipop counter it does not mean i mean uh, it, it can be in the linear part of the lollipop counter for a substantial time frankly speaking there is no way for uh, non non root nodes can know that a root has rebooted oh yes you can know after it left the, the, the linear only you, uh, if it left but there is a substantial time 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 difference right but i mean you think that during the time that you're in in this linear path yes well in the, in case of reboot if uh, if you don't store the version number then a root also cannot root will always start from the beginning of the lollipop counter right seems to me that we should have one of these numbers be uh resettable to zero which indicates that you've rebooted and we never lollipop so if we want to use the four bits that we're going to create here and say configuration option zero maybe one is in the linear stick part of the lollipop then that's the indication you've rebooted well, but michael we're back to why there is a little piece the linear part is just to in case you lose <coughs> the first one in case you missed the first one um, yeah so, when, so the, i'm sorry because i'm have a calf here um if uh, if the root for instance reboots right uh you could say oh the the linear part is just one value Yes. So, so you send that value, and after that, you start sending values which are already not. <coughs> right. But if this message is lost, you know, as it's the DIO spread, if some nodes miss it, then the next DIO that they will see will not be in the linear part. So they will never see that the root has rebooted. So that's the reason why we have a linear part, is to make sure to give, it's like retries, if you like. If you have like four right. values in the linear part, mm -hmm. then you have four chances to see um, the IOs before you, you miss the either. So you think four is the right number? Uh, I'm not saying four is the right is number. I'm saying the, the, the number that it's, it's configurable right now. We, I don't remember if we give a value, maybe 16, but uh, maybe we say start at 240, but if, for instance, your network is small and very reliable, there is no reason to start at 240. You can start at uh, 252. Um, and we do this right now for the version number, not is what you're saying. I'm sorry. Do we do this for the version number? We do that for the version number, yeah. Okay, so, so doesn't that provide enough of a detection that the root is rebooted? that we don't need to repeat it in the configuration number. I, I think it does, and I don't agree with how clear the first point is right. Uh, if you reboot twice within the linear piece, then the second reboot will not be seen. But the question now is, um, will we wrap anything else before we leave the linear part. And will you change the configuration like 16 times while you're still in the linear part? It probably means that your linear part is way too big. Uh, For instance, if your linear part is 8, you will need to change... Oh, uh, well, is that true? I'm thinking too quickly. No, it's really the DTSN that will explain this class, not the version number. You can stay in the version for a long while. Yeah, the version number usually doesn't change. Yeah, the DTSN is what, is what may change because you may pull network. DTSN uh, may change only in case of storing mode of operation, but in non storing mode of operation, again, the DTSN is also. DTSN change is also a rare event in case of non storing mode of operation. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's really in the past sequence. You know, the, all this thing I've been talking about uh, increases quickly if, well, for the past sequence because each time you send a double, uh -huh, you, you, increase it, you increase it. So the route detects quickly that the node is. Um, is rebooted, but the root itself. 
so 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 during our implementation uh, we found out that there is no easy way of telling the nodes that a root or any other node has rebooted there is no no definite way of telling currently that that that, that there is a node reboot uh, be it root or uh, 6lr or any other node well like i said the path sequence that goes back in the linear path is an indication that the node has rebooted path sequence uh, but but here it's the root node so there is no path sequence i mean uh, right, the path right i mean it is you said for any six oh, 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 okay, okay, well, okay okay on the way up you can see from from the root you can see the node has rebooted no no but again but, again, but, again but, again if you don't no. increment the version um reasonably quickly then correct no no in, sto in storing mode something for a different draft now we we are going outside of yeah, uh, yeah but i yeah. agree with you Raoul. um okay unless we give some rules you know to to exit this version quickly like have a uh, just the linear part very small and the version number maybe just one value and then set that value to one very quickly so that you know you can use it to detect the reboot of the root, but it will take a different draft, which explains how that works. Correct. We could make it work, right? But it's not there; it's missing. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, so if, if the linear part of the version number is just one value, and the node, the root after, after a reboot, uses I don't know zero, and and then right after that it, it it goes it creates a new version very quickly which is not in the linear part then we are all set we no but 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 but, 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 but pascal uh, but what you do describe that in our c6 okay yeah, yeah but, but pascal again there are, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of small points that you have mentioned uh, in between that hmm. the root has to start reboot and so then back to Raoul's question and and how you're correct i mean if we use only four bits and we we use uh, the, 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 the linear part then four bits gives us you know a, a circular part which is way too small if we want to use the same logic as the other three examples right otherwise we would need to use the full byte correct and then we can use section seven or something right hello uh hello can 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 you hear me hello hello Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Raoul. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so, 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 I look like look like this is the two useful bytes for the sequence counter. Is it okay to you? Sorry, sorry, I lost you, Pascal. There. What did you say? Raoul, I'm not sure you. I don't know why. But Pascal, I'm... someone said, someone said, can we use a whole byte for the sequence counter? E if we use the whole byte then it becomes much uh, much uh, i mean that the, the, there is no unknown because then uh, then uh, at least in this case uh, I, I think pascal is not able to hear us or is it or, or or me is it can everyone else hear me yes we can hear you all right so it's pascal so if if we make it 8 bits then basically it is it, it, it is uh, same as every other sequence counter that we have in uh, 6550 yeah. makes things much simpler uh, but it's uh, yeah i'm not sure basically if if if, if 8 bits is uh, if 8 bits or 4 bits is good enough hello can you hear me i can yes. hear you pascal yes, we can hear you yeah um so the question pascal is whether we should make it to 8 bits um, and then that just becomes less of an issue to just to worry about. Um, I was just looking at section seven again, and I didn't realize that it was uh, the, the linear part was a whole 28 numbers. I thought it was only 16. I guess you can start in 240 if you want. Uh, I don't. I, I, I don't think it's a big deal if we decide to go for for all eight bits. Um, I think we could survive with a lollipop counter of of uh, four bits with um, three or four 
uh, part of the, the stick. Um, but I think Raul has a fair bit of experience with, with this reboot problem. And I think we should go with whatever you suggest, Raul. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the reboot is a, is 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 an issue regardless of uh, regardless of this discussion. Uh, it, 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 it's a it's a it's a problem that I have even uh, mentioned in the in the other draft, the observations draft, that it is it is impossible for a node to uh, for, for 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 other nodes to discover that the node upstream has rebooted. Uh, so this this is a different problem altogether. Uh, having said that, I think we should continue with our discussion. Uh, uh, with regards to this draft, the uh, other point. So shall we? Shall we? Shall we continue uh, to to the next point here? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm back. By the way, um, so I, I lost my audio. Great. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. 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 So, so, so the next point would be that uh, this information about this new sequence number, which which draft, uh, which document should this go in? Uh, whether it should. Uh, I, I don't think it's part. It should be part of the capabilities document, or sh can it be? Does it have any utility outside of it, outside of the capabilities? Yes. The, the the reason why I say it has utility outside the capabilities is because this is a generic counter, which not only elides capability option, but a MOPEX option in the future, as well as existing configuration option. And as discussed on the mailing list, this could as well be made use of for other options, such as prefix information option. So it's it's a generic counter uh, regardless of uh, the capex uh, the capability or mopex uh, uh, option. So, so how would you would you think that you want to have this to compress more than the configuration, or would you just when you say it could be the PIO, would you wrap the PIO, the configuration, and many things into one big wrapper and just give the sequence for it? Or so, so, each, each piece. So, so ba ba basically, what I was thinking is all the static information which rarely changes, and prefix information option is one thing that usually doesn't change. Uh, so, in this case, uh, uh, the prefix information option currently is a different option altogether. It's not part of uh, uh, any other container. So, 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 yep. so, so now if we have. And I feel it can be a separate container altogether. It can be. We don't need to. We don't need to. We don't need to say that the prefix information option has to be carried inside some other container for it to be lighted. Well, the problem is the PIO specifically mm -hmm. is explicitly the exact same format as neighbor discovery. Right. But for the length, which is not, uh, which mm -hmm. is placed in bytes and mm -hmm. doesn't have to be a multiple of eight. Mm -hmm. But for for everything else, it was just this the same option, and it's owned by ND, not by us. Right. So so Ripple does not provide the format. No 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 Pascal. But I'm not I'm not say, saying that we change the format here. Uh, we just say that whether the PIO is carried or not carried in the DIO. If we say that, it, look right now we need an option which says that the information that I have is stale information. With this, uh, with this new counter, we know that a node has this mechanism of, of detecting whether the information it has is the stale information or it's the fresh, in, fresh information. If it has stale information, then it's going to query anyways to the upstream node. During okay, this, so, yeah. okay, see what you're saying. So, so basically, we have only one sequence counter. We place it there. It could mm. be placed anywhere. We place it there. Right. And this covers a number of fields and any of those field changes, this sequence counter increases. Right. That's yes. Your, yes. Oh, I like it. So, so make it white because many things could change now. Okay. It, why don't you use all, all the, the octet and define it exactly like the, the, the past sequence, you know, because we have all the text in section seven. Right. So why don't we just say this is another sequence counter which operates just like the others. Right. Um, <coughs> it allows to find the reboot, by the way, mm -hmm. and oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. If the root reboots, should it come back to zero, by the way? No, I, I, I think, Pascal, that, that problem cannot be solved with simply a lollipop counter, right? I mean, uh, that reboot problem is a different problem altogether. Uh, if, 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 if we, we can't, so, so you mentioned that the root, when it reboots, it will, it will just increment 
uh, the sequence counter to some other number. The problem is how soon can the root eventually increment the sequence counter? I mean, there, there are a lot of other problems. Uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of other points that have to be taught for handling the reboot case. Having said that, if we if we forget the reboot case, if we simply say that it's a lollipop counter, well, the moment we say lollipop counter, we it's assumed that the linear part has to be stored in the external storage for the node. And if the node is rebooted, it starts it, it, it starts from the if it is in the linear portion, then it starts from the next value in that linear portion. Yeah, we isn't it isn't it mandatory for the node supporting lollipop counter to store the linear part of the lollipop counter in the external storage. Now this uh, we have never said that and um, actually the, the linear part is not very well thought because the assumption is the node will not reboot twice within the linear part but if it happens uh, the spec doesn't tell you exactly what happens. So, uh -huh. But 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 but, but uh, I mean, a couple of ideas back. I, I mean, this this problem is explained in detail. In fact, this problem is stated in detail in the observations draft. It's there's a complete section on this saying that if 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 it reboots in the linear part, then the linear portion has to be kept in the external storage. Now, this is a statement that I've made in the observation draft. Now, if you, now you're saying if it is if it is incorrect, if the statement is incorrect, then I'm not the saying it's incorrect. I'm saying that we have not. Okay. The, the, RS, the main RSC, and that's why it's in your observation graph, is the main right. RSC did not discuss so that. Here's my suggestion. Say. Here's my proposal. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that we write a document that creates this um, uh, sequence number, one byte sequence number. I'm not sure I like the word sequence number, but uh, configuration uh, number uh, uh, thing. And we also include in it clarifications of for lollipop counters. So it's an update 6550 anyway to put this thing in. We take all the text from the observation draft on when do we need to store it in flash for the node issuing the, the, the number and for the nodes listening to the number. Put that all in a document, update 6550, and that solves the problem of where does this thing go or what draft we do it in. Okay. I mean, the, 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 this works, Michael. The, the only problem with it is the ISG doesn't like to see too many small drafts these days. Uh, so that's why we do. We, let, let's write this text anyway. Uh, but in terms of packaging, we may ask the, the ID uh, because it's not just what, you, what you're proposing is cleaner, is the right way of doing it, but then there is the quote-unquote political aspect to it where the ASG wants to have less drafts. So I understand they want less drafts, but then they're going to have to spend a lot less time on uh, nitpicking big drafts. If they want to have less drafts, then they're going to get big drafts to do many different things, and they're going to have to spend a lot less, ta lot less time nitpicking because the big drafts take forever to process. So. Yeah, I agree with Michael that have a document that specify the counters, so we can go further with the with the work. And I mean, if it's, I don't know about the ISG, but I think uh, if it's the right way to do it, we just do it. I mean, we have the use of. <clears throat> As a chair, I had to discuss a similar case a year ago or two, and the ISG made us put two different things which were big, each one. In a single draft, if you know the LP1 chic draft, it has fragmentation and compression in the same draft. And I oppose that as a chair, exactly like you're doing. I wanted two separate drafts. And the, the AD made us put that in one big document. So all I'm saying is, I agree with you all. Let's just ask Alvaro. Okay. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Okay, okay uh, so continuing. Uh, uh, right right now I'm calling this counter uh, set counter, but I really wanted to call it as a seal counter, but I couldn't have, think of any appropriate full form. If you guys can think of it, it will be great. Uh, basically, if, if, we call, if we can call it a seal counter, then we know how it operates. Like It, it seals the information uh, for the specified, uh, un, un, unless the next seal is applied. Uh, so, so, so I wonder if, if someone can come up with a good uh, full form for seal. Anyways, it's not a technical issue though. 
let's so I'm, as of now I'm, I'm just calling for the purpose of this slide a set counter it, can we go to the next slide okay uh, so uh, we have already discussed uh, that what is the applicability of the set counter currently uh, i mean uh, we we are thinking of eliding in the future we might uh, like uh, capability option the mopex and it is possible that in the future we might elide other static configuration information such as prefix information option now it's it's it, uh, I, w I thought of about one point is that uh, if different nodes decide to elide different information for example if there is a node downstream which decides to elide prefix information option but there is another node which doesn't decide to elide that will 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 that be a problem and as of now i couldn't i don't think that should that will be a problem since 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 uh, we have we, we would have a clear mechanism of telling whether the information is uh, fresh or stale in the future based on the uh, sequence counter the set uh, set counter so that should not be a problem next the set counter is going to be controlled by the root node alone and only the root node can change the counter or increment the counter in both in all the storing in all the mode of operations now here um, i'm not sure, uh, sure whether yeah say, yeah how um i understood from what you said that you expected that uh people could still place some of the elided information um well, uh, and, and part of it but I was confused because what's the point? I mean, either people, everybody has everything, or they can't really operate, right? We are talking about information which is necessary for operation, like the configuration, the PIO, etc. So right. if you have the PIO, but the set is not good, you still need to send a disk anyway to see the rest because you cannot operate. Ex right. So what's that, the point in having the PIO in this packet? No, no, uh, uh, Pascal, you're right. You know, uh, there, there's no point. But having said that, I, I was just thinking if the implementation for some reason, now I don't know the reason, but for the if the implementation decides to not elide the particular option, then what happens? I was thinking of the worst case here. What I'm trying to say is, even if this happens, there won't be much of an issue. Because we have, we, yeah, yeah. We, we, that's probably good because yeah. if you don't have enough space in one packet to send all the options, right. we yeah. may yeah. have to send one to three packets, which yeah. which have each of some of the options, right? Right. Yeah. Because we need to be very explicit on which options this covers. Basically, if, if I need three, three DIOs to get all the options, so I send this disk, and the parent sends me DIO 1, DIO 2, DIO 3. Um, and well, no, there are many, many cases, like I miss one of them, etc. But first thing is, once I've seen the three DIOs, I must be certain that now I have everything for this value of the set counter. So I need to know beforehand what to expect. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, if I got only two out of those three, then I, I need to be able to ask mm. again mm -hmm. for the third. Yeah. Um, and today the disk doesn't say what it says, so, but I think we need to, to increase the disk to be more specific. Yeah. Uh, in that same document, Michael, that you're talking about, we need to, to put it in the disk to say what I want. I, I, I think Pascal, you raised another po important point that uh, you know the, right now there is no way of saying whether all the information is retrieved or not. Correct? The node has retrieved right. all the information or not. There is no way of knowing that. But having said that, as of now, I think I don't think we have. I mean, we have not faced such a problem. But as the DIO is growing in size, we might face this problem. So, well, on the other hand, the is this really are an issue? Is the DIO really better. growing that much in size? Um, it's 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 uh, it's 93 bytes in my scenario. Uh, I mean, uh, but 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 uh, uh, again, if we consider 127 bytes MTU, it's 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 not much of a difference now. There's just 20 odd bytes, uh, 20 27 odd bytes left to be fed. 
on the other hand, the device that the IEEE is giving us now will enable us to send more than 128 right? So this is an old limit. But still, I mean, I, I believe that it doesn't cost much to express this, even if it's not used a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, basically being able to say, oh, uh, say we've got this case, I see a, D, a DIO with a set value of 30 and the PIO in it, which tells me that I'm missing the map and I'm missing the configuration. Um, I should be able to send the disk, say, hey, I would like the map and the configuration, but I already have the PIO. You see? Okay. So, so I think it's, for, it's to make the story that Michael has started complete, we need, we need all this. Mm -hmm. The set plus the capability to ask selectively sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh... Shall we move to the next slide? Basically, that's uh, that, that's pretty much it from here. Okay, the capability is option syntax. Uh, now, 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 this the, uh, we 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 had a major discussion about this in the last interim call. Uh, earlier, the the currently the draft uh, considered caps as a sequence of bits, but uh, we are clearly moving away to a, from from this sequence of bits to a TLB format now. Uh, in the last meeting, we discussed about having cap bits, having several cap bits. Uh, one is uh, whether if the cap, cap capability bits are not, if the capability bit or if the capability is not understood, then should a node join as a router or a leaf? This can be indicated as one bit. Whether the information has to be copied to the children. Now I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, uh, thinking for further on this, I'm not sure if we really need this uh, th th this bit to be present. If if the capability is not understood, then is there any reason that a node will copy the capability information to its child nodes? Do we really need such a flag? And you, basically, individual capability spec specification should define whether the node should copy or not. Uh, I mean, if 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 we. So the 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 use case for copying things to your children is when what what the root wants to do is a survey of all the nodes. To find out whether who supports what, mm -hmm. and I, I feel capability out. should be. Go ahead, Robbie. Hi, uh, actually, I feel capability should be part of individual node instead of uh, whole network. It should be every node should send its own capabilities to its uh, below sub -dudak. No, Rabbi, I think I, I, I think uh, the context is different right now. Uh, what you're saying okay. is, is is current definitely possible with the current capabilities set, but uh, what we are discussing uh, right now is uh, is a different problem altogether. It's a specific point about whether if a node doesn't understand the capabilities, if a six LR doesn't understand the capabilities, should it copy this capability to the children? Whether there needs to be a bit specifying mm -hmm. so. No, if, if it is up, that capability is applicable to whole net all the nodes in the network, then it should copy. But how does it know that if it doesn't know what the capability is? Yeah. That is also on. So problem. what we're trying to do here is we're trying to future proof our, our situation so that um, we can find out um, who's capable, what nodes are capable of something. And in some cases, we may decide to enable some feature that might mean the no network is going to reconfigure itself because some uh, devices um, no longer can operate as routers. They have to operate as leaves. But we don't know that until we've actually asked them all. And so the ones that don't know what the capability is, they may become leaves, and some of their children could become parents, right? Mm -hmm. That's you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the the, yeah, the, yeah. the uh, topology could be different as a result. We may decide that's a good thing, and we may decide afterwards it's a terrible thing, and our topology is crap, and we should turn that capability, that feature off until we've upgraded more nodes. But but we won't know that unless we actually can interrogate all the nodes. That means we need to be able to ask all the nodes, do you support this? And so that's why the question, you know, we think that, I think that 
capabilities need to be copied to the children even if you don't need no. Now, do we need a flag on a per capability basis to decide this? Maybe not. Maybe mm-hmm. this should always be copied. Oh, always be copied. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's, that, that's the other but, alternative. Uh, you don't need a flag. You just always need to copy. In my opinion, maybe we can classify which capabilities are global and which capability only specific to a node. Depending on that, we can decide. Let's say uh, a neighbor case size of a node that no need to be propagated uh, to the whole uh, network, right? The example that you quoted, Ravi, uh, the neighbor cache size, uh, mm. the, yeah. the, the, this 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 is this might be of interest to all the upstream parents on the same path. It might be of interest to the route, uh, root node as uh, as well. Because, oh, it, it will be, in, it will be interested. interested. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I, I think. Yeah, Rahul, you complete. No, because 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 DAO projection allows the root to control uh, control all this all, all I mean control what routes get set on on all these devices. So it okay. is possible. Uh, so this information is not local alone. Is what I'm trying trying to say. Okay. 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 Maybe like my point is like maybe my example is wrong, but my point is some capabilities maybe it is it is only specific to the node. I Means so we should identify which capabilities should be propagate to all the node to decide whether the network can operate with this particular capability or not. And some are node specific which can be only we can no need to propagate to the below nodes. Uh, so so so, so uh, w- w- what my assumption was that. These, these, the handling that you just just mentioned should be on individual capability basis. So e- eventually, there will be individual capability specifications. So there will be multiple capabilities that would be defined eventually. Yeah. Okay. okay. Individual yeah, yes. capability spec should define all these points. I mean, it it does not need that need, need not be a generic flag to say the such such things. Correct. And anyway, we are planning to move to the TLB based format, right? Not to the flag based. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the subsequent slide, I'll just come uh, come to the exact format. Uh, so, 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 going ahead, uh, the, the another thing that we discussed uh, in the last interim was uh, we need additional capability information. Uh, this information might be optional, and again on per capability basis. So we need a method uh, using which extended information can be optionally specified as per, on, on per capability basis. Can we go on to the next slide, please? Uh, the next slide uh, shows the format of the capability options. The first, the first line shows that the, all the capability TLVs will be containerized into a single option. Individual TLVs, then uh, in the second, second part, you can see that it's an individual capability, capability type. It has three flags right now. First is J, join only as leaf if capability is not understood. C is capability cap- uh, copy capabilities to children, and I I flag is a capability information option present. If this flag is not set, if the information flag is not set, then there are no additional extended information for that capability option. Uh, now the reason why we are doing it is a lot of capabilities might be simple boolean boolean uh, flag on or off or uh, wh- wh- whether it is supported or not. But certain capability options such as uh, routing information and neighbor cache information requires additional uh, information which cannot be simply stated as a single bit. So this is why we require this extended information. Now the extended information again needs the length and then the actual information which will be defined by the individual capability specification. Does this format look okay? Um, I don't like it because it's different than other TLV formats that we have so far, and I think we should reduce the number if we can, even if it's a t- slightly wasteful. Mm-hmm. But um, if you want to go with this this format, then my suggestion is to right align the, the bits, the flag bits, mm-hmm. um, and to extend the cap the cap type to at least 12 bits. Well, maybe 10 10 or 12 bits. Okay. Okay. That's my thought. Um, is that eight feels a little bit small? Yes. I think we want to have a private use case, a private area um, of 
25 to 50 percent of the cap types should be private use because I think that this is going to be interesting and important. Um, how do you distinguish them from different networks and all sorts of stuff is is a problem. But um, and I say I am saying I think that we need uh, some uh, some ex at least some experimental space in there. Okay. Um, I can live with this format. I just I I would say let's go back and look at the other TLV formats that we're already using in and see if if we can fix this you have a one byte length maybe um, there was one version of TLVs in Ike v2 where um, all of the capability types below 128 have only one byte after them, and all of them above 128 have a length field. Um, that might be a better way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. So the cap type would encode whether or not it has a cap info present or not in, uh, by definition. But of course, that doesn't help us in the case we don't know what it is. Uh, well, no, because the, 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 no, no, because we know if the upper bit is set, then basically what I'm saying is you move the I bit to bit zero of cap type. That's okay. really what, I've, what I'm saying. Um, let, let me let's think about this. But I, I, you know, if if there's some fundamental reason why you like this one, I'm not. I don't object to it. I just think we should make sure that we aren't having more TLV type than we have to. Yeah. So uh, no, I I really don't. Uh, I haven't really thought in detail about this format. Uh, the only thing that I thought was, it is it it is better not to include the length, if the capability information is not going to be present. So that is the only thought that came to my mind. You know. Uh, so I, I would like to save that one byte uh, additionally one byte. So if 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 we go by the other TLV format that we have existing in 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 in, in 6550, it would mean that the capability length is part of the default TLV. Uh, uh, which means the length is part of every capability, regardless of there is going to be an extended information or not, and the length will be set to zero. If the information is not there. So, uh, Rahul, yeah. if I am not sending any capability, I no need to send that information, right? Then why you think uh, um, like one byte will always set, even if the length is zero? No, no. Uh, so, so how do we know? So, if the okay. length. Okay. Yeah. My opinion, after cap, cap, uh, capability type, we should place capability length. Then all these flags plus that specific information of that option should go as a body. I mean, as a value. So, so, so Instead the of doing part... like this, mm -hmm. we can do capability type, then capability length. After that, we can mention what is the specific uh, information about that capability option. Means whatever the flag or any other information will be after the length. The so, length will be... so, so whatever you just mentioned is exactly the same as the existing options uh, or existing existing TLV format that is used in 6550. The only problem with this is if the length is zero and hmm. there will be a lot of capabilities which will happen to be which case the length byte is useless. So what I was trying to do here was uh, use just the uh, just the I bit, which says that capability info is is present or not, and then avoid uh, sending length altogether. And okay. I, I, yeah, so that, that, that that's what uh, the thinking was. But when I'm sending so capability, then there it will have some value, right? Let's say. Uh, uh, let's say I am sending a neighbor case size, then I will give it some value. Let's say no, mode no, of let, operation, I am supporting no, this mode of let, operation. Okay. So we already have a use case where, uh, let's say, uh, this 813, 8138 uh, turn on or enable or supports 8138, uh, uh, hmm. RS8138. So that is just a, uh, just, a, just, just a signaling mechanism which, which doesn't carry any value. It's just a flag saying that it supports, the node supports uh, there is no value zero or one there. Means you, whether we are supporting that uh, compression yeah. of that routing header, right? Correct. Sir. Okay. So, as we mentioned, it's one thirty-eight. I was thinking whether, you know, if you cannot join, if the capability is not understood then 
you know, 8138 basically says that the types that you have to recognize, you don't need the length because it's a type which is well known. Now, I don't think you, we can play this game here because you may not understand one capability, you may still join as a leaf, and you may still want to read the next capability, so we need to know the length. So, so the game that we have in 8138 does not apply. Uh, no, the game by which we don't have a length. No, if it, mentioning. Okay, so uh, we we, yeah, we, we need agree. we need to be able to to skip capabilities we don't know to find mm. the ones that we mm. do. Otherwise, we have an ordering issue mm. with capabilities. Exactly. It's yeah, only yeah, if there is agree. a capability that if you don't support, you cannot even join as a leaf. Uh, then that the game could apply. But we we I think we said last time we would not let, do that. Let, let's 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 get some notion as to what the capabilities are that may need some additional data. Um, and and then let's see whether or not we can, you know, maybe we only need to have um, four kinds of lengths. Like, you know, there's one byte, there's 10 bytes, there's 20 bytes, right? And we don't actually need the whole byte of the length. We, we, can, we can have something less than that. I don't know. Let's get some notion of that first, I think. And then let's figure out what, what we need for the length. Okay. okay. Yeah, I agree so with so you. Uh, uh, Rahul, I have one more suggestion. Uh, like you told about the supporting RF's uh, routing header compression, right? So maybe we can club all the six slope and related uh, um, capabilities into one capability option. In that case, uh, we'll have uh, length also there. I don't understand that. I, I think your point yeah. is that it, that, that if you that the capability I support 8138 implies a whole bunch of other things as well. We don't have to negotiate them separately. And I think if that's what you're saying, then I completely agree. Um, but that I think is in the detail of of the capability description rather than the the framework for the capabilities. But 8138 yeah, yeah. is, is not ND, right? So maybe you thought 8505 yeah. or something. <coughs> The okay. point is that the combination of I support 8138 and I don't support efficient ND is maybe not a valid combination. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying that's true. I'm saying maybe that's true. If that was the case, then you don't need to separately No, it's them. not true. I don't see. One is completely a Ripple world, and the other one is completely ND world. Oh. Uh, you could Ripple and not ND if you wanted to avoid ND. Mm -hmm. So we yeah, understand the, the grouping. We will play grouping, mm -hmm. but okay. maybe not that one. I was wondering if so. so I agree with with Michael. You should push the bits to the left, and underline to something like two octets to say that's the bits plus the type. And actually, the bits are part of the type if we okay. see it this way. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Now you could have one bit which says <laughs> that you have a life, a, a, a length of one byte and, and then whatever info. And if that bit is not, so, so with one bit you could signal a length. You could start like that before, and I agree with Michael, we learn, let's learn. But to start with, we can say, oh, either we have data or we don't. So one bit to say we have data, and if we have data, then you have one byte length and so many bytes of data. But then Pascal, whatever you just said is exactly what is there in the slide right now. If we have a single bit which says that there will oh, be yeah, length so additional good. information. Yeah. And then yeah. you, it's, it's, yeah, you do, well, I don't see the length field, right? Um, on the and I, I would like the bits move to the left. OK. And otherwise, yes, we need to decide how big the length is. But if we, are four, if we have four flags, like we, we may need another flag. We still need to reserve for one flag, I don't know. And, and then 12 cap types, then we are already aligned to two octets, so it would mean one octet of length and so many octets of data, I don't know. With 8138, we have compressed that a lot more, I mean, to death. I, I don't know if we need to compress to death right now. Okay. Maybe when we refine, we'll compress more. But maybe you can start just by saying four flags, 12 bits of cap type, then length, uh, if if we have data. Okay, clearly one thing is uh, basically uh, right now we had both the discussions that using length 
as part of the base uh, capability type along with the capability type we also have length or we have i bit now the only thing is let's uh, maybe what 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 we can do is we can we can explicitly put out examples and then decide maybe that is the better option like, if we already yes. have enough yeah. examples yes yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we 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 can assume the the routing table size, the neighbor cache size, eight one three eight as the examples, and then let's see uh, how it fits yep. into all this, right? Works. Okay. But you can't presume for the future, so having you know something which with a length field is always good. Okay. Okay. Right. So that's. That uh, that's all from this slide. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so one of the things that we discussed last time, but I think I don't think we had a conclusion or a, 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 that what has to be done if there is a capability unaware node, uh, a router node, that router node would clearly strip off the capability option because it doesn't understand that. Uh, in this case. And if that capability happens to be a mandatory capability, how I mean, oh, the, 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 then it gets ignored. So how to handle this scenario? Uh, should we let capabilities be used only with newer MOPs? Yes. Then it makes things more simpler. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I suggested that our MOP equals seven, where mm -hmm. we then have a, we then have the MOP X still say one, right? That mm -hmm. is a new version of non-storing, right? That's in a sense a new mop okay. that would now support all this business okay. stuff. Okay. That's part of what I was thinking may be the case. I don't know if that's a good idea, but um, but also, you know, maybe maybe not for non-storing and storing and historic ones, but maybe, but certainly I agree for a new mop, so we, we want to do this. And I and I strongly think we need a new mop for our non-storing with uh, DAO projection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 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 one of the things that we were trying to do with the capabilities was to check whether it can be used with existing MOPs with the existing mops. Uh, but looks like that need not be done, or maybe that's not that's too much of uh, a hassle. Or maybe. It's not required. Maybe we handle it only with the newer MOPs. That that looks like that is the well, position. Well, well, but so so, but rem so we had some conversation about how we might have to go and pull nodes um, uh -huh. that we heard about, right? So we might go with we might start off with you know good old fashioned non-storing mop and put some cap in it, and then uh, but we get the DAOs, so we know who's actually out there, and we see the ones that did not reply to our cap poll. And we have to ask them directly with a unicast. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that was Pascal's uh, wow. notion, and wow. and that we still have a net savings by multicasting this because we didn't. We still we we okay. we're, we're gonna do. We don't have to do the whole survey. Uh, we get a lot of results without it. Okay. Okay. I did, okay. The, 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 yeah. Okay. So this the, the the this thing I didn't catch up last time. Last time I guess. So okay. Yeah. This makes sense. Yeah. So right. So this uh, then basically that much. Uh, the, 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 then it's possible to handle the unaware nodes uh, in that case without much uh, much of an issue. Can we go to the ni next slide, please? So uh, one of the important points that we we, we discussed but uh, haven't really concluded is the new messages. Uh, it's not mentioned in this, uh, but uh, yeah, new messages. So we, we we discussed last time that maybe DIO and DAO is not the right place to carry these capability options. Now I was thinking, what are the repercussions? What are the what are what are the side effects of, uh, of having new messages? One one thing that came to my mind was, if a node decides the parent set based on this additional capabilities and if this capabilities change keep, keep, keep changing there are certain capabilities which which are dynamic capabilities what happens is a node has a set parent set but it doesn't know the current capabilities in which case mm -hmm. after it chooses 
the parent after the parent selection is done after the parent switch is done it has to again query for the for that parent's uh, capability set using additional uh, signaling will that but be for okay? all parent will be sending the capability information in a di or already yeah. right no, uh, uh, Ravi, there was one discussion last time. I mean, Pascal oh, okay. suggested that it is not a good idea. It doesn't go with the principles of DI or DAO to carry this capability information. Okay. okay. You know, and there should be a different message altogether, mm. which can be used to query, to disseminate all this, all all this information. Uh, having said that, we don't have a clear set of. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we we have not really thought about this in detail as of now. Mm -hmm. But uh, the the only point that is mentioned in this slide is what happens if there is a parent switch. In which case, and if during the parent switch, uh, if the capabilities are required to make the decisions, decision which okay. in that case there will be additional signaling that will be required by the node after parent switch or parent selection. Uh, yes, agree, agree to this point. You're saying I'm receiving a DIO from a parent which is not my parent. I would like to switch to him because of DIO. And I don't know his capabilities. So you, I could ask him with a this before I switch, right? Right. So, 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 so that, just, just, that just complicates the parent selection procedure is what I was thinking. Uh, would you agree to that? Uh, yes, I agree with you. No, wait, wait, Rabbi. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yes, if we make the parent selection based on capabilities, um, I've not seen that yet. But do you have an example? Uh, one thing can be that if 8138 is supported, let's say for example, I mean there could be examples for clearly, for example, uh, the routing table size that we are trying to send through capabilities. Uh, if the size is too small then there is no point in using that parent as a as a as a preferred parent so so it's it's better to do better to not consider that parent as a preferred parent or not even keep him in the parent set as far as possible if, if it is below a particular threshold there could be examples i mean uh, yeah Hmm. From the middle of case, I was role? mostly thinking about pooling, you know, the capabilities. Mm. I was saying the the way the DIU and the DAO work are not pooling from all children, for example. I think this method also have some problem. Let's say I'm doing a parent switch because of link failure. Then I have to wait till I get the capabilities from the parent. Right, this will, don't you think no, this will be the, the, the capability expressed like you do, I think I hear that the capability is part of the objective function. So if I see a parent with, without mm. a certain capability or I don't know yet, then he, he okay. ranks at such a point in my objective function. And then if all of a sudden I get the capabilities from him, then I, I change his, his value in my objective function. Um, so not, not the rank that I compute necessarily, but the fact that I decide to use him. So, but yes, it makes it a two-step. I, I see what you're saying, Raoul. It makes it a two-step decision possibly. Right. So what I was saying is to the, the DIO has a little bit of a concept of pulling information with the DTSN, but it's very crude. It's not yeah. reliable. Mm -hmm. And so pulling the information, either from all your children or even from all the network, is not, is not what the DIO does, right. and it's not the way it operates, I would say. <laughs> and it carries a lot of information that would be useless in a message that is aimed at pulling information, not at giving information. Okay. Yeah, you is there mm -hmm. to give information, not to pull. So can wow. we can we can we can we say something like this that if 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 uh, if a particular you know, what, what what we are trying to say is you know there is some overlap between the metrics, the routing metrics and the capabilities here. Then you could say them in the DIO. Yes, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, we we already said that the configuration may be in both. 
right um the io and, and the new message so so this right. this my some if you need if you have the need then why exclude it right i mean right. i see what you're saying hmm. in general it's not the right thing mostly for pooling i don't it's, it's not the right thing mm -hmm. but if if for instance the parent needs to give capability to the children uh, for the routing decision, then yes, why not place them in the DIO? It would make sense. Right, right, right. So, so uh, can we have something like this that you know we d we define the options? These options can be carried in uh, in the DIO or in the new message. Certain capabilities might not necessarily might not need to be carried in the DIO. Where maybe those those capabilities could be querying. Uh, I mean, there there, would, there could there will be a lot of capabilities which need not. Which 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 should not make any impact on parent selection. Yeah. Such capabilities can be so so these capabilities will be individually uh, when the capability specification for these individual capabilities are defined, it could mention whether it could be exactly yeah all right uh, on, I think. right okay. So, uh, so, so uh, Rabi, you, you, yeah. uh, do, do you have some point here? I mean, I, 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 did I? No, no, no. I, I, I agree. We can uh, divide the capabilities across DIO and I mean, between pool and push model, we can segregate the capabilities. Okay. okay. But uh, one point, it should not be like uh, metrics, routing metrics and capabilities should be two different things, right? It is different. Yeah, it is different. I mean, this is a different uh, yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, but, um, but I have one question. Maybe it is not related to this uh, topics we are discussing. Mm. The mom, that time I was asking about that PC, right? Path computing element. Uh, I am not clear how that he will, like from the capabilities, how he will going to get the uh, network topology so that he can compute a best path using some uh, path computation uh, algorithm. Unless until he get, let's say, I am a node, if don't tell, who are my neighbors? Like the way ISIS or OSPF works. If I don't tell, these are my the neighbors. Then he can build the topology. But from the capabilities, how he is going to build the topology in case of DAO projection? No, no. Uh, so, so we said that the, the DAO projection would have um, at, at the last meeting, uh, Ravi, we, we yeah, discussed yeah. at that point uh, the, at the ITF 105. And we said that that would be a new option similar to the target option. I have just not written it yet, but okay. it's it would be uh, um, something about sibling. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. So we are going to send all the neighbors or only just selected neighbors? Oh, okay. Um, that's a different discussion. We are going off topic here. Okay, sorry. Okay. The, 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 the point is, if it's a very dense network, you don't want to send all neighbors. So you will have to have heuristics mm. to select okay. some neighbors. <clears throat> and um, I don't know how much of that will go in the RFC. Probably we won't say much because okay. we don't know yet. Just like, you know, the original repo has a lot of holes. Mm -hmm. It's oftentimes because we did not know. And so we said people will try and get, give good advice, which is exactly okay. what Raul is doing with his, his document. Okay. Um, with observation document, and so we will we'll improve next time. Uh, for the time being, we probably will just say, oh, you can expose neighbors with this message. Uh, don't put too many or something, okay. and that's going to be it. The, the other thing we could be doing is, um, if A says that B is, my, is his neighbor, probably there is no need for B to say that A is his neighbor. So have something to make sure that it's either A or B, but not both, which okay. are the root. So okay, this, this is very simple. Uh, making mm. a, a decision of who you expose when you see 100 neighbors is very hard. Um, there are heuristics, but I don't think we'll place them in the RFC because <coughs> it, would not, it would never make RFC with heuristics like that. Okay. Thank you, Pascal. I got it. Okay, then uh, this basically was my last slide. Uh, that's, that's, that's all. Thank you very much, Raul. So, do we have uh, f further uh, discussions here? Do you need uh, another meeting, or we jump uh, directly to the ITF? 
don't think we need another meeting, but I think we do need to publish a zero zero document yeah. uh, for the um, capability yeah. plus blah 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 update and lollipop counter. Yes, um, and yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And the yeah. and the capabilities is a different document as to, uh, with the mode of operation or say it's the same document. What the uh, it's the best because we discussed in the last ITF that we separate these two topics. But uh, what do you think? I think we should put uh, together two different documents, and if the AD tells us to combine them, we'll combine them. So, so, so you, 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 we we separate out the capabilities and mopeds mop option then? Yeah, even I feel capability we can put separate. I think we need yeah. the lollipop clarification with that allocates the um, the I don't know if you saw in the um, Etherpad I suggested a way to get it become a seal. Um, the, uh, the L becomes lollipop. Um, uh, so I think we should have that document. We should have the MOPEC document, and we should have the capability document. And I think we should let the AD tell us there's too many documents and suggest to us how to combine them if they want to do that. Okay. Okay. And they're pretty much all going to update 6550. So that yeah. might become the common theme is it's just an update. But, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know who do, I don't know who should write what at this point. I'm kind of not I'm kind of overloaded with documents so I'm not volunteering right now but I will be happy to co-author but I don't think I can lead any of them. Okay. Uh maybe maybe we can find some new blood. Yeah, that would be nice. But it takes somebody who understands the discussion we just had. Uh, Dominique, <laughs> are you willing? Uh, sorry? Uh, I, I, we need somebody who understands everything that was said. Oh. Right, right, right. And I thought Dominique is on the call and he understands everything and is aware of the, this problem. Uh, asking. Hello, Pascal, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, unfortunately, I don't understand everything. Uh. I'm trying to to understand as much as I can. But, you know. Okay, I mean, the first draft could be easy. Um, Maybe we could, I mean, somebody can start it and then the other authors from this call can join, right? Um, but I mean, I, I see a two pager to start with, and so I could even write that two pager like two more mornings. Uh, but then the devil, the devil in the details will come later, right? Um, that, that, there are two pieces, right? Um, there is all the sequence counter that Raoul has been discussing. And, and I think it should become uh, one byte, so we can use second time. Mm-hmm. And and then there is the this discussion, like we need to change the this. Say, oh, uh, the complete set is A, B, C, D, okay, the spec says that. Uh, and I received A and B, I need C. Um, so the change in the this is needed. So that's, I can start it. Um, Raoul, I would certainly, you would need to be co-author, that's obvious. Uh, my call, you, you come later when you want. And I was wondering, because there is a this discussion, if Dominique, you want to be author to, to contribute to the this discussion. Yeah, I think I could do that. I, I heard the comments, you know, about a way to request capabilities. And since we still have this, this DIS uh, draft to write, I figured this could be the, the right way of doing it. Right. Yes, maybe you could retrofit some of your ideas. You know, if we want to be standalone with this draft, we need to have enough meat in it. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Sorry. So we could discuss in version two, version three, how to piggyback some of the things from the this draft to this one, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm definitely joined. Okay, so, so I will start something. I will forget half of what we said, but uh, the recording will be available. And um, 
I, I can start it tomorrow. Okay, let me do that. Uh, Raoul, I will put you and, and Dominique. Okay, and great. Michael, you tell us when you join if you if you want to join. Hello. I would also like to join. I got you. Okay, that's fine with me. I just couldn't find my enemy. But I got here, Raoul. Oh, hello. Yeah, Can you hear me? Hello. Back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, so, so, so right now, as I understand, there are four documents that we are talking about. One is the capex, okay, capability. Another is the mopex. Third is the dis continuation and the lollipop count. Uh, fourth is the lollipop counter handling. Is that what we are saying? Well, uh, what is the dis? I don't know what that is. So this the is yeah. The one on which Dominic is already working, but it's kind of stalled in there for okay. ever. Um, and I, I wanted some of it, you know, since we are uh, including some of this discussion in, in the third one, the one that uh, I would be writing quickly tomorrow. Um, the, Dominic may want to retrofit some of this discussion because it's, it's kind of overlapping with what he's doing anyway. I'll make a first pass and send the XML to Dominique. And Dominique, if you see added value for the disk, you know, some things you want to retrofit. And, um, and then we'll see. Okay? okay. Uh, please use the GitHub uh, tool to write the uh, post, the XML. I, I did not understand that. Please uh, use oh. V3. Uh, use the GitHub if you want. GitHub okay. so, yeah, so, so repo. Yeah, I can I can do that. I can do that. So you so can we, write the repo. You you mean put it is in the repo WG uh, group. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Please. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for the meeting, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for you. the meeting. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.